Welcome to the Lonely Catch Up. It's myself, Chris, and today I'm joined by Kevin Marshall. Uh, some of you guys might have heard of him if you're uh, long term listeners. Uh, he was on a few times last season. Uh, it's great to have you back. I think this is your first time back on it uh, this season, Kev. Yeah, this is my first time this season, aye. And just a, a bit about yourself, obviously, you do uh, photography work for Kelly Hearts and uh, a few of the five teams in Genefield Swifts. Yeah, that's right. Just just any of the local teams uh, around about me, really. Um, I'm in Kinross. Kelty's just five minutes down the road for me. So um, if there's a, a home game on, then that's usually where I'll be. Um, but uh, getting, a bit, getting to the away games is a wee bit more difficult for me on a Saturday. So I tend just to, if Kelty are playing away, just to go to, to one of the other um, non-league games around about, uh, around about the area that I'm based in. Not quite... What I was expecting today, obviously, there's. Uh, I was expecting uh, Derek and, and Sean, but unfortunately, they're unavailable. So uh, Kev's uh, kindly uh, joined back in. Uh, we'll start with uh, what was going to be the Lowland League catch-up game of the week: Bonnie Rig Rose versus Civil Service Strollers. Unfortunately, it was postponed early on Friday. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> talk. You've probably noticed yourself, Kev, about why it was postponed. But I believe their pitch is probably not in the best condition. Uh, it did seem to be a, a bit early for me. I would have thought. I mean, I know there was um, there was heavy rain around the area uh, the, towards the end of the week, uh, but I thought they might have given it at least until um, until the Saturday morning before before making the call. Uh, I mean, it's not as if civil service were were having to come for, uh, from the other end of the country or anything like that. But I mean, who knows? Who knows what uh, what goes on? Definitely, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I messaged uh, Mark McConnell, the, the civil captain. He done a brilliant preview for us. It's something we're we're trying to do. Obviously, it took all that time, and uh, yeah, it was a bit, you know, uh, that got postponed. But yeah, uh, so unfortunately, no Bonnie Rig and civil service strollers this week. Uh, we'll move on to BSC Glasgow versus Spartans. I don't know if you've noticed, Kev, uh, but it's been a wee bit sort of testy with a few teams I've noticed, especially over the last week or so. Uh, I've noticed that, I. <laughs> But BSC uh, versus Spartans, yeah, they, they do have a sort of competitive rivalry, I've noticed. Uh, they don't seem to like each other very much, and... Uh, it was BSC that, that got the win there. It was uh, Thomas Collins. Uh, Tamor put him uh, a pinpoint cross to find Thomas Collins, who smashed his strike past Carswell. Uh, BSC did have a few chances, but I think there was a, a few sort of tackles in this one. Uh, Spartans were in really decent form, actually, going into this game, uh, and I thought they might have uh, snuck a result, but um, yeah, BSC still still doing well, still in the, the hunt, uh, keeping pressure on, obviously, Kelty and uh, Bonnie Rig. Yeah, I've only seen um, Spartans once this season, and that was way back in way back in August. So I've not really got an awful lot to um, to go on for that game. I think they got I think they got beat maybe five 0 or something like that. Yeah, when yeah. they came to uh, New Central Park, and I don't think I've seen BSC at all this season. So um, just I, I would only be going on a league position really on this one and on form, I would, and I would have expected. Uh, BSC probably just the edge it, which is how it turned out anyway, I think. Four out of four against uh, Spartans across two seasons, but yeah, there, there se- seems to be a bit of a, a rivalry there going on anyway. Gala uh, versus Vela leaving, obviously, the Borders derby at the Netherdale. Uh, a bit of a, a few shock results, actually, over the, the weekend. I don't know if you're keeping an eye on it, Kev, but this was probably one that I would have thought Gala, especially the ne- Netherdale, would have won, but uh, Vela leaving uh, ran out 3-1 winners. Uh, 12 minutes in, Brad Dirksen uh, gave Vale the lead and he doubled it on the 38th minute. Second half, Lyle Smith pretty much secured the win on the 73rd minute and Scott Taylor McKenzie, a guy we obviously know quite well, it uh, could have been him or an own goal. He kind of got a consolation in the 87th minute for uh, for Gala, but what a fantastic win for Vale leaving. Uh, it's just it's not one that I would have sort of highlighted uh, but again, it's a, another derby match, and you know things can happen in derby games. Exactly, I and I mean when I saw Vale just a couple of weeks ago, they got a real a real doing at Kelty eleven nil, um, and I know where they're sitting in the league. You know they're they're in a quite a precarious posi- uh, position, so uh, uh, that's a that's a huge three points for them there against the uh, against their local rivals. And I mean if there is any debate about the the gala goal, then I think we we'll have to give it to to Scotty T. I think. Yeah. Yep, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it was 
It was down at Scotty T, but um, I think Vale called it an own goal, so <laughs> I might have just tried to rob him off that one. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have highlights to watch, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, fantastic win of Vale. Leave them, and it lifts them off the bottom. They've been uh, they've been at the bottom for a few, more than a few weeks now, and uh, fantastic win, really. Uh, full credit to Chris Anderson and the boys there. Yeah, good to see them at least still scrapping uh, when you're down there, and uh, you know it's easy to to let the heads go down a wee bit, but uh, it's shown that they've still got a wee bit of fight in them at least. Berwick Rangers versus Caledonian Braves. Uh, Berwick Rangers got the the win, uh, 1-0 at Shieldfield Park. Uh, the big news this week was obviously that Ricky Miller and Daryl Healy, the probably arguably two of uh, the better players at Berwick, moved to East Kilbride. There was a lot of comments uh, <laughs> specifically to the players and obviously at the club uh, from, from Berwick fans, but... Um, yeah, they, they got the win without them. Uh, your Ozzy on the 36 minute. Uh, I had a fair bit to say. I don't know if you saw the goal, uh, Kev, but uh, defensive lapses from Cali Braves. I mean, for me, they're a, they're a decent team. They've got decent players, but they, they do have a habit this season of just switching off and, and it's cost them points. Uh, and again, uh, Berwick that we've seen. I didn't actually see the goal, Chris, but I did see your uh, your comments on Twitter uh, around the the defensive laps. Um, so I, I think just looking, I, I mean, I know Berwick have taken a wee while to settle into this league, uh, and um, I think just the, the league position of both of those teams, it was always going to be a tight one, I think. Uh, so I one goal was probably all that all it was going to take. I hope I wasn't too harsh with Cali Braves. It's just that they have a tendency throughout the season, obviously, to score a lot, but they they have unfortunately for them conceded a lot. So it was just an observation. I can't remember if you went to Alliance Park. Uh, I really enjoy the the setup there, and they're a, they're a club on the rise. But I think that that's the one sort of as I mentioned on Twitter, the the one criticism uh, that I have of them uh, that I've noticed this season that they do have these defensive lapses but uh, you know it's it's probably a wee bit unfair on them in a sense because we because of the media and stuff we we do see more of them than compared to other teams where it could be a similar situation I guess I mean just just looking um, at their their for and against column I mean, they've scored 38 and conceded 37 so that's kind of exactly just probably underlining what you just said there that um, although they, they do well in front of goals themselves they, they are prone to to leaking at the back as well. Eh? Yeah, I thought it was one of the best games. You know, either team, very, they'll take the three points. They'll be quite happy to take the three points because of the circumstances of the game. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I didn't feel under pressure really in any part of the game. There was a spell in 20 minutes in the first half that they had some runners off us and had a bit of pressure, but not didn't really threaten our goal too much um, with, with any quality. Um, but you could probably say the same about ourselves. Um, I think the whole game lacked a bit of quality uh, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. But I don't think any, any team deserved to win it. I don't think we deserve to lose it. I really don't. Um, but we're sitting here with, with no points, so um, we've got something to look at. I think both teams lacked a bit of creativity in the game. Do you think that was our fault in the game? I think it was our fault that we didn't lack creativity. We've got creative players on the pitch and it's their job to go and be creative. Um, I just thought we lacked a wee bit of energy to find the spaces. There wasn't a lot of space in the, on the pitch because both formations sort of cancelled each other out like it did in the first game. Um, but it's up to those players to go and see where the space is and, and see where they can go and get on the ball and, um, as you said, create things. don't think we've done that to any real quality today. Um, that happens in football, so uh, we need to move on and be better. Ben Daly came in and he did run his socks off in the first half especially, but just what happened there, like, why did that didn't work? Um, uh, he, um, most of his play was coming in from, although he was up through the middle, he, he peeled off to the wider areas and something he likes to do. Um, and he had an opportunity with his volley across the, the face of the goal, um, had another opportunity a long distance. I just felt we lacked that wee bit of penetration and the quality didn't he, didn't he, um, he come for us today in that final third which maybe he started to work off scraps and things like that rather than a decent through pass or a decent pass, a decent combination um, but you, you're going to, at Scottish football at the end of the day you're going to get you know days like that where you maybe need to pop up with a little bit of quality we lose a goal because we don't win the header and they just run beyond us 
um, we don't mop that up. So um, that, that's that's a disappointing thing. We had opportunities like that. They did defend it better than us. But I thought felt in the game more or less the guys defended pretty well as, as a whole group. But like I say, we go back to it. We're sitting here with zero points um, from the game. So uh, that, that's a, the the bread and butter of it and disappointing. I told them then there, I'm, I'm thinking about that because we need to go uh, and train, train Monday this week, train Thursday this week and um, we need to be at it, we need to get our heads up, we need to go and you know, work really, really hard and analyse the things that we need to do better. It'll be a different type of game, it's at home, it's on the, the Astro, um, but we've got to have more, I'm looking for our good players, or not good players, but our creative players to go and play with a bit more uh, bit more substance to go and make things happen, a bit more believe, a bit more drive uh, to go and make things happen for us. Any thoughts on Ricky Miller and Daryl Healy going to East Kilbride? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I think East Kilbride have been strengthening a wee bit just in, even just in the last few weeks. Um, and they seem to be, they, they seem to have got over, I think, their, um, their early season dip. That, that they suffered. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not really sure. I'm not too too familiar with with both of the players to be honest. Uh, but I think well probably East Kilbride just starting to to get back to the sort of form that um, that we've kind of come to expect from them. I think. Yeah. And on that note, we'll actually move into East Kilbride versus Dalby Star at K Park. East Kilbride won three one. Uh, it was now now at half time, but early into the second half, uh, Peyton played a one-two with Malcolm at the edge of the box, beats the star defender and slots home past Parker. Uh, that was on the fiftieth minute. BJ Coyle he whips uh, a great ball into the box and it meets the head of Craig Malcolm, who powers the ball uh, past uh, Vinnie Parker, and it looked like Star might have had a bit of a lifeline on the eightieth minute. The away side did pull one back through Calvin Cowie, uh, but Rory Payton on the 90th minute did seal the win for them. He beat the offside trap and uh, rounds the star keeper. I think that was probably expected, especially at Cape Park and what you mentioned there, Kev. Um, East Kilbride sort of on the rise again after Stuart Malcolm's left and uh, Jim Parsons took some charge. I know for a lot of football left to be played this season, obviously, but just looking, I think it's, it's maybe a bit of a stretch for them now even to to make it back into the the top three, but uh, I think, um, like I say, getting the, getting back to something like we expect from them. So uh, you know, the, like I say, difficult difficult part of the season coming up. So uh, yeah, you never know what could happen. Coming on Colts versus Gretna two thousand and eight at Broadwood Stadium. Uh, probably another one that you could probably put down as a wee bit of a shot. Gretna. Uh, revitalised kind of like East Kilbride with a new manager obviously Rowan Alexander uh, taking over from Chris Humphrey uh, and it was one of their new players that got the, the only goal in the match in the 14th minute I'm going to massacre this guy's name uh, <laughs> pronouncing it <laughs> uh, Benjamin Lucent I think uh, he's on loan from I believe I think it's Queen of the South if I remember correctly but yeah 1-0 uh, 1-0 win for Gretna over Cumbernauld at Broadwood uh, they did draw earlier in the season. I believe it was one of the only nil nils. We don't get a lot of them in the Lowland League. So Gretna kind of maybe a wee bit of a, a jinx team for Colts uh, by the looks of things uh, this season. Yeah, but I do think you're right. They they have kind of rallied a wee bit just recently. I think um, for, from a selfish point of view, I think Kelty probably got them just at the right time because they have picked up since then. Um, and Broadwood's a, a tough place to go, you know. Uh, um, we've seen the Colts there a couple of times, uh, and they are a, a tough side at home. And certainly, I know Kelty have struggled against them over there uh, both times they've played them. Um, so, I that that's a really good result for Gretna, and it's good to see them. I think getting uh, getting a wee bit back on track as well. Uh, moving on to a team that you know fairly well. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't at the game uh, yesterday, Kev. But Kelty Hearts versus University of Stirling. Uh, Kelty did win 2-1 uh, at New Central Park. They started well, like the first couple of minutes. Uh, Fash had a really good chance. Uh, he kind of laid it off to Cammy Russell, but it wasn't to be. And, and Cammy had a, an early shot. But really, apart from that, Sterling Uni really pushed. Uh, they did get their, their goal on the 11th minute. It was Craig Brown who 
just really uh, went for a run. Uh, none of the Kelty defenders could really get near him, and uh, he laid it off for uh, Jason Jarvis to open the scoring for Sterling Uni. They might have had a penalty. Uh, it's I said there was a bit of talk about this, uh, but it looked like uh, during a Sterling Uni corner that uh, Nathan Austin might have handballed it. I thought at the time it was a handball, uh, but the referee didn't give anything. Kelty kind of came more into it uh, just before sort of half time period. They did have a few chances, uh, but really second half, uh, as you would expect, as we know, Kev, they, they came out fifty uh, eighth minute. They got the equaliser. It was an excellent, excellent ball from Cammy Russell, uh, and Nathan Austin put it away for the equaliser. And on the seventy eighth minute, um, it was flash again in low at the back post to give Kelty the lead and the win. You might have noticed Kev on the lineup, but obviously uh, Tam Scobie was missing uh, as well as Dylan Easton. Uh, Sean McCurdy was kind of playing attacking mid with Ross Philp on the left. I don't think it worked that well, uh, to be honest. Kelty, I think we're a wee bit poor with the with with the formation change. At Arnie Bemble got a book in sort of on the half hour mark, but I think tactically it wasn't working anyway. Uh, so he went off for for Chris Dodds, who then sort of switched. Uh, to left as as we know and uh, I think uh, McCurdy sort of came back and Ross Philp went up uh, but it's an important three points for Kelty, uh, I don't think it can really be understated that these are the sort of games where the likes of Kelty, BSC Bonnie Rig uh, have to win if they're going to uh, go for the title Absolutely, yeah, so like you say I, I missed the game yesterday, I was living the high life at East End Park yesterday <laughs> but I was uh, I was getting regular updates on, the, on my phone and uh, and on Twitter, I, but I, I think generally that that kind of follows the the two games that I've seen against the uh, University of Stirling uh, already this season. I think we played them once over at their place, and then Kelty played them at home. Must have been a cup game, I think, uh, just a few weeks ago. And I think both times, uh, I would say Stirling Uni had certainly had the better of the first half in both those games. Uh, from memory, I think they were one 0 up. Um, uh, at their own place at half time, uh, and they certainly gave Kelly a really good uh, a good game in the first half. So I, I think the the game you've just described there seems to have followed the same sort of pattern. Uh, it's maybe just one of those teams that uh, I don't know if they, they maybe got the measure or they maybe just they, they start really quick or something like that. And and Kelly seemed to to struggle to get going against them in the first half. Um, but I think. I, as we've probably come to expect, Kelty always seem to have a bit something up their sleeve in the second half as well. I don't know if it's the, the fitness of the players or if it's just the spirit or what, uh, but they always seem to, to be able to, to keep it going for the uh, right to the final whistle. Eh? We'll hear from uh, Chris Geddes uh, with David Chandler. Well, Chris, you must be very proud of your players this evening. Yep. Um, the boys were... Credit to the university, credit to themselves and the, the people here watching them today. I thought we more matched Kelty, especially first half, second half. Kelty had a lot of possession and some crosses and stuff, but um, we kept ourselves in the game and uh, I think we were pretty unlucky in the end. First half, um, Kelty perhaps didn't get off to as good a start as they were hoping for and then Uni got noses in front. Yeah, well, they had, they had, a, they had an opportunity in the first minute and then after that we settled into the game and then we scored a good goal. Uh, a break from a good counter from our box um, Craig's went by a few in the edge of the box and he slipped JJ and he's, he's kind of mishit it but we take them and went 1-0 up and the work rate the pressing out front was phenomenal today wasn't it yeah the boys were excellent Kieran up top was excellent Kieran was playing against a player who's on loan from a League 1 club a full time League 1 club and he, he battled him excellently and I would probably say Kieran had the best of that battle but um, obviously people say I would say that but uh, on the on what we watched today he did uh, so credit to him and uh, the other forward players as well Second half we were expecting Kelty to come out all guns blazing but you, you kept them pretty subdued Yeah the first 15-20 minutes yeah a wee bit um, and they upped it obviously they've got some like I said yesterday they've got some excellent players um, and yeah there was a, the game went in a bit of a lull um, but obviously you can't switch off with a team like Kelty because they've got dangerous players all over and then they got the two goals through Austin, um, got in front, but you had a big chance right at the end. Yep, that's why I guess teams pay the big bucks because you get a striker who scores you two goals in a game where he's, our defenders have played well, played in well. It was a good battle. 
First one, he's um, he's made a great run through the centre backs, touch and finish, excellent. Uh, and the second one, it's poor from us, short corner. We haven't got out to it. It's a cross in the box, and we've not cleared our lines. It's right, we should clear it, and it's felt him, and he's tucked it away. So fair play to him. And then obviously in the last minute, uh, Gus has had a chance from five six yards out. He's made it himself, mind you, with a header in, and then he's battled, but he's put it over the bar, and he's obviously devastated in there. But that's I thought he was excellent today uh, at the back. Um, so he shouldn't let that uh, affect his performance. So all in all, a day when you're, you're proud of your players. Definitely, really proud. It's disappointing to lose, but um, we gave a good account of ourselves here and on another day we would have got a result. Chris, thanks very much. Thanks, David. So obviously I want to thank David Chandler and Chris Geddes for the interview. You know, I, I spoke to them after the game, uh, always brilliant. Uh, yeah, there's uh, a few Sterling Uni players that I like. Uh, we obviously see a lot of Kelty, Kev, but you're, you're right, uh, Sterling Uni have a, a, a decent team. Uh, Jason Jarvis has obviously been a standout, Craig Brown. Uh, the interesting one for me yesterday was uh, Callum Downey. Uh, he was up against Cammy Russell. Uh, Cammy Russell was fantastic, to be honest. Uh, when he's on his game, you know this yourself, Kev, he had one of those ones where he, he just passion. He was just, he, uh, there was one where he was just right at the, he must have ran right to the back to get to recover the ball you just that's the sort of player you want in your team basically yes I, I he's just one of those players when he's on his game I think um, he's as good as anybody in that side he maybe doesn't get the the headlines that like say Fash does for example but uh, I'm always I'm always chuffed when I see uh, Cami on the team sheet to be honest so moving on to our final game of the weekend it was Edinburgh University versus East Stirlingshire uh, East Stirlingshire came away uh, 3-0 winners uh, at East Peffermill again 0-0 at half time uh, I believe Shire had uh, a lot of the chances obviously but uh, 49th minute uh, great corner from Bobby Barr uh, and Jamie Dishington rises majestically to head home uh, 78th minute it did take them a wee while to, to sort of seal the win if you will Nicky Lowe fires a 30 yard free kick high into the net uh, yeah, the keeper had no chance basically uh, they sealed it just before the the full time uh, whistle uh, Shire after a fantastic run from Nicky Lowe he crosses from the byline and Sean Brown uh, sees a header beat the keeper uh, it's kind of what they needed after the result against BSC uh, Shire uh, one of the, the criticisms they've been very consistent against the sort of Edinburgh unis if you will uh, but they've not been able to sort of beat the, the Kelties, the BSC, where they, well, we'll get into obviously they have Kelty uh, <laughs> next weekend, but uh, they've kind of had a hard luck story against the 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 bigger teams or the, the teams around them, if you will, with the sort of top. Uh, they played Kelty uh, at Falkirk Stadium, and to be honest, I don't know if you, I can't remember if you were there, Kev, Kev but I thought Shire were the better team, and I think it was a similar situation in the BSC. Uh, game, so they've just been unfortunate not to to pick up the wins against the the bigger teams. Aye, well, I mean, as you know, I sometimes uh, write a wee bit for the Kelty program about the the visiting teams, uh, and I did a, a page on Shire just last week. And when I was say, uh, you know, when I was looking at back at the results, um, I was actually kind of surprised that they'd been doing as well as they have been. To be honest, maybe I I got a wee bit dismissive of them. I think I don't know. But I, I, I didn't realise that they were, um, they're still up there really in terms of the, their league position, uh, and the, um, you know, they're, they're still within touching distance of the top three. So I, I didn't probably know too much a surprise that they, they beat um, Edinburgh Uni as, as well as they did there, to be honest. Uh, and obviously, unfortunately, we're talking obviously about Shire being sort of the top four, if you will. Uh, Edinburgh Uni now bottom. Ed. Who do you see as uh, the potential sort of teams to go down the, going into the season? I thought Edinburgh Uni were going to struggle, and it looks like they have now. If Vale, uh, Gretna and are, are, are firing now, it looks like Edinburgh Uni might be the team that perhaps uh, might not be in the Lowland League next season. Well, I mean, I've, I've got the table in front of me here just now, and it, it is really tight. That, that bottom four is only covered by four points, so... Really, anybody, uh, Dalbiti, Gretna, Vale and Edinburgh Uni, they're all really still in it. Sitting, looking just now, you would think maybe Gala have got enough of a, uh, a gap. They're on 16 points, so you know maybe they've got enough of a cushion to keep them safe. Uh, although there is still an awful lot of football to be played, but really, any one of those bottom four, you've got to think they're, they're in a really difficult position, eh? Yeah, I looked at a point in time where it might have just been sort of Vale, 
uh, Edinburgh Uni and Gretna, but Dalbiti look like they're sort of going back uh, into that sort of bottom four, if you will. I think any any of the teams in the bottom four uh, should be a wee bit worried, but I think you're right. I think the Galas, the Berwicks, uh, they've got probably enough to, to sort of be safe, if you will, uh, away from the bottom. I suppose it all comes down to the the games against the, the teams around about you at the bottom there. And as we just said, you know, Vale and Gala have just seemed to, to pick up a wee bit in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, maybe that's just enough to give them a wee bit of, um, a, a wee bit of momentum going into the... I always find January, February a really difficult part of the season, you know, just with the, the weather and the pitches. And, and if you've got that wee bit of momentum, then that's maybe just enough to, to see you through, really, yeah. What would you think? We obviously have a few cup competitions that you know about. Was obviously following these to Scotland as well, but uh, we have the East of Scot, uh, well, the Football Nations Qualifying Cup, and then the the South Challenge Cup, if you will. What would you feel about maybe having a sort of non-league, basically all non-league, maybe Lowland Highland uh, Junior competition? Do you think that's something that could be looked at in the future? I mean, well, there are an awful lot of cup, cup competitions kind of at this level. So, I, if it was replacing maybe one of the other ones or or changing the format of one of the existing ones, then I, I would be all, all in favour of that. To be honest, um, I always like to, you know, to try and get around the grounds and and maybe see teams that I normally wouldn't get the chance to see. So, I, I would, I would certainly be. Uh, in favour of something that, of that sort of nature, aye. But at the same time, like I say, fixtures do sort of pile up around about this time of the year, so I'm not sure how um, how keen some of the players would be <laughs> to, to see another new competition being uh, being introduced. Well, the likes of Colts and uh, Shire don't play in the... Aye, they don't play in the Football Nations, obviously, not being members of the East of Scotland. There's a lot of tradition behind these sort of... Uh, cup competition, so it's hard to just to to scrap them and create something new. But it's a wee bit surprising there isn't, uh, you know, some sort of tier five, you know, Highland versus Lowland or even the juniors. I think it's something they might look at when the pyramid's a bit fuller. But again, I suppose there's finance behind it as well. Uh, you know, if your teams are going up to the Highlands three, four times a season, obviously, I think there's more incentive and uh, and the likes of the Scottish Cup. Uh, but it does make it a, a special, if you will, if it's in the Scottish Cup. But um, yeah, it's it's a good question. Um, I think there would have to be stuff done. Uh, you're probably right. You probably have to scrap one of the competitions. I would say, or or just reformat it a wee bit. Maybe you know, just uh, just to, as you say, limit it to sort of fifth fifth tier and below sort of thing. Uh, is there any players that? That you've seen uh, from any team, I know even East of Scotland teams that you've you've really been impressed with this season. Uh, and is there anyone that sort of surprised you that's maybe not performed as well as you thought? Well, I mean, obviously the the teams that I see most that um, out with Kelty are uh, probably Hellebeath, um, Dundonald, Crossgates, and maybe Genefield. Although uh, I've not been to Genefield as often as I would like this year. Um, but certainly, there, there's a guy. Um, I've I've seen him. He was at um, he was at Crossgates last season. A young guy called Mark McKenzie, um, and I think he's moved now. Bonnet, I think it is. He's moved to, and uh, you know, I, I really I, I really liked him. I thought he was he was really quick, uh, really good feet. You know, good uh, and and clinical in front of goal. The only thing I would say is maybe um, a wee bit light. A wee bit slight, certainly for this type of um, the the type of league that he's in. You know, you're you're always uh, getting yourself into a physical battle and stuff like that. So if he could maybe just kind of put on a wee bit of beef and bulk up a wee bit, I think he would he would um, really go far. But uh, yeah, he's he's a really good wee player that I like uh, a lot. Um, some of the guys that I've seen at Hill of Beath, I've probably mentioned two or three of them before. I think it's good to see Callum Adamson back at Hillebeath. Um, you know, he, he gives them a bit of pace. Um, the two fullbacks that they've got, uh, Lyle Kelligan and Sean Leishman, you know, they're, they're two guys that get up and down the, the lines quite a lot as well. Um, Hillebeath are one of those teams, I think, they seem to play on the 
on the break quite a lot because they have got so much pace up top. Um, I, so I, those are guys I think that have, that have stuck out for me for what I've seen this season. For me, and I think you'll agree, Kev, but uh, one player who I was su- like really surprised at, considering you know his injury last season, but Ross Philp, for me, a Kelty, has been fantastic. You can say the guys that have came in, like Nathan Austin, Scott Linton, you probably would expect them to be at you know, a really decent level, uh, you know, at this level, if you will, with really standout players. But uh, Roscoe has been fantastic. Uh, I'm shocked at how good he's been. I was expecting, you know, I've always sort of rated him, but uh, I wasn't expecting him to be as good this season. And I think he's been brilliant for Kelly. Most of the games I've seen him in, he's, you know, up there with, you know, for man of the match most, most weeks, I would say. I, I would completely agree with that, mate. I remember Ross before he even signed for Kelly, um, and and then when he came uh, when he came to Kelly, I was really chuffed. He had a really good season, and then he got his his, his injury kind of quite early on last season. I think it was against Cumbernauld, if I'm right. And um, so he missed most of the season. Um, and you always wonder if they're going to be the same when they come back after that sort of injury. That I think it was a, a cruciate knee or a medial uh, ligaments injury that he had. Um, but I, I think he's, he just seems to have picked up exactly where he left off before his injury. Um, one of the things I think about Ross is he's one of these players that he can play just about anywhere in the park and he's still a solid sort of seven, eight or nine wherever he plays. Um, I, I think I always thought of him as a, a kind of right-sided midfielder, but you know I've seen him play virtually every position in the park apart from keeper, and he, he just looks comfortable wherever he plays. A uh, great engine, you know, he, he never stops moving. And again, he's one of those players that you always feel good that you've got a good chance when you when you see his name on the team sheet. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more there, Kev. Uh, four players that I've probably not... I expect them to maybe perform a better. It's, it's harder, I think, when you're... Uh, when you're not seeing you know the team every week in that, but certainly I thought Craig Malcolm as top scorer last season might have done a wee bit better this season. I know he got a goal uh, at the weekend there, but I think he's had injury issues as well, so I don't know the the complete story. And he's and he's been you know uh, in and out of the team as well. But he's he's had issues and stuff, but compared to what he done last season, clear top scorer. I thought he would probably compete with, with the likes of Nathan Austin, but it's not happened so much this season for him. But he's still a, obviously a quality player. He, it looks like he's he might be coming back. I, f- I think he did have uh, some sort of injury to begin with, and he's maybe just teeling up now. And uh, well, it's good for Eastcote Bride if he starts getting the, the amount of goals he, he scored last season. Yeah, absolutely. If he can get something somewhere somewhere back to to the level he was at last season, then absolutely it gives uh, it gives gives Eastcote Bride a, a a really good chance of, of climbing that table. I mean, you know as well as I do, I mean, we both speak to a lot of the players and stuff like that. And certainly at this level, there's a lot of things going on away from football as well, work and that sort of stuff that can that can impact uh, these players as well. So, you know, it's, it's really tough to, to put your finger on it sometimes with, with why somebody has just kind of had a dip in form. I think Mark McKenzie might count for you, so don't worry too much. But is there any young players coming through in the league that have impressed you so far this season? Well, Mark, Mark's obviously the one that springs to mind. Um, there's the, a couple of guys I've probably mentioned before. There's a, another young guy at, at Hill of Beath called Joe Kirby, who I like. Um, you know, he's, he is just a young kid, but he, he's great on the ball. And not just that, he seems to have a wee bit of an attitude about him as well, which it's maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but you can, I quite like to see a young guy coming in against older players and and no being intimidated by them and you know uh, being able to kind of to give a wee bit back and uh, whether it's physically or or just verbally and I think Joe Joe certainly fits the bill with that one. Eh? Well, I, I've mentioned him already. Obviously, got the goal against Kelty, but well, you know, uh, I, I talked to you uh, throughout the week, most most weeks, Kev, but uh, Jason Jarvis uh, certainly for Sterling Unis. I've been very impressed by him. Uh, probably a, a, a lot of the Stirling Uni boys actually are obviously quite young and 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 keen and stuff. So uh, apart from that, George Stanger, uh, I thought he was impressive when I saw him. I've, I've saw East Kilbride a few times. Uh, I think 
Uh, obviously on loan from Hamilton Ackies. He's he's been done well. Ryan Shanley, a civil who's on loan from Hibs. There's actually a few of them. Um, you know, Yao Balde, I think, uh, Berwick, uh, Kevin Waugh, Berwick, I think he's still 20, sort of in his early 20s. There's a lot of a good youth football. Uh, unfortunately, I've not been to a lot of the, as many development games as I was last season at this point, so there's probably less sort of development players that, that have stood out in my mind. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's uh, a league where... You do have the experienced players as well as some of the younger guys uh, coming in on loan and, and, and some of the younger guys just getting a chance uh, at some of the clubs as well. But uh, there's a lot of young talent as well as just a lot of talent in the loan league. The standard's really good and it's we've, we probably say it too much, but it's just improving every season. Yeah, and I think it shows when you see teams like Hibs uh, and I know St Johnson put a lot of their players on loan uh, to to BSC, so you know, you know, it's it's good when top flight teams are putting players on loan to to this level. You know, I think it, it shows that um, they are recognising the the quality of that league that and the um, you know the the grounding that that gives some of the younger players by by getting a few games there on loan. Um, you know, there was a time where you know players would have had to just sit in the reserves or or possibly go on loan to, to some of the junior sides. So. Um, I think it's good that they're recognising the quality that we have in our league. We'll move on to the weekend's fixtures. There's quite uh, a few uh, biggies, if you will. <laughs> uh, we'll start with Friday night's game uh, at the end of the drill. Uh, it's a quarter to eight kickoff. It's BSC Glasgow versus Bonnie Rig Rose. Uh, one that Kelly will probably be keeping an eye on. Yeah, I think we'll be hoping for a draw there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely mentioned that they didn't play last week. Both of these teams might have an eye on their Scottish Cup ties coming up, So, but it's a big league game. I don't know who to, to go with, uh, to be honest, because BSC did beat Bonnie Rig at uh, New Dundas Park, uh, but I couldn't call a winner, to be honest with you, Kev. Yeah, it is probably a wee bit too, too close to call. The only thing I would say is the... The Friday night fixtures have got a habit of kind of throwing up some some odd results there, um, but I like you. I think I'll stay on the fence with that one. To be honest. And uh, going from sort of top to bottom, uh, Delby Star, who I think might be getting dragged into that sort of relegation, uh, sort of four, if you will, uh, are up against Gretna on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff at Islecroft. I. I want to sort of go with Dalbiti being at home, uh, but if they do get beat by Gretna, who have sort of been decent uh, since Ro- uh, Rowan's came in, I think if they get beat there, it's it's uh, they are going to be basically uh, struggling. Uh, I, I you know uh, they're in amongst them them four teams. I think they're just a wee bit of it, out of it now, but I think if Gretna do get the win there, they're obviously going to be in uh, in a bit of trouble. Dalbiti star. I I think um, that is your kind of classic six pointer really. Um, part of me maybe go for uh, go for Gretna on that one just purely because of the, the how much they seem to have recovered just in the last couple of weeks. But certainly um, whoever whoever gets a win there, if anybody can get a win there and grab the three points, it, it's uh, it's a hugely important three points just when you. When you look at the the situation at the bottom of that table there, yeah, uh, the winner of that one's uh, I, I think a wee bit of pressure off. I would I would say uh, East Kilbride versus Cumbernauld Colts at K Park. Uh, Cumbernauld Colts um, before their defeat to Gretna, they were actually doing uh, they were doing all right. I mean they've been kind of hit or miss uh, this season. They started really well and then they sort of fell away and then they... Uh, I noticed after they, their defeat to Gretna, it was pretty much immediate that they were saying we're moving on to the next game and I think that's the best thing they could do. But uh, resurgent East Kilbride at K Park, uh, I'm going to give them the advantage and say they'll probably uh, be favourites for that one. Yeah, I would probably agree with you there, mate. Uh, I think Colts at home are a very different proposition than they are on the road, so... I think home advantage maybe just just edges it for, for EK there, I think. Caledonian Braves versus Vale Levin uh, at Alliance Park. Vale Levin, they'll be a wee bit buoyed by their, their result against Gala. Uh, <laughs> Cali Braves, again, I have, was maybe a wee bit too harsh for them, uh, but they're going to want to bounce back with a win at Alliance Park. 
Uh, if they can keep the defensive lapses up, then uh, they're the favourite for me. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think um, VL are getting better, but uh, that's maybe a wee bit a step too far for them just now um, going to, to the break. Uh, another another one sort of uh, above the, the, the bottom four, but Berwick Rangers versus Gala, kind of the battle for 11th, if you will, uh, at Shieldfield Park. Well... Let's put it this way, if Berwick win or draw, uh, it'll be the first time uh, in the catch-up team of the month that there there will be a Berwick player. If they don't, then it'll be another Gala player. <laughs> but, uh, so a lot to play for in that one, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I'll go with a draw for that one, yeah, down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think I'll maybe, maybe join you there. It, it is a, a tough one, and, and like we said earlier, they've both of those sides maybe just got enough of a cushion to, to stop themselves getting dragged into that relegation battle. And I think um, I, neither neither of them are going to want to lose that game, I wouldn't have thought. So I probably a draw is maybe, maybe the result. Well, they don't stop, Kev. Uh, Spartans versus Civil Service Strollers, the North Edinburgh Derby, as it's, it's commonly known at Ainsley Park. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Strollers have been quite impressive this season, actually, considering the injuries, like to David Churchill, Sean Turnbull, Chris McKee, guys like that. Uh, Sparrow's wore on uh, good form, uh, you know, just before that BSC defeat. But I, these games are always tight. But I think, if I remember correctly, I think Spartans usually come out on top. So especially at Ainsley Park, I'll probably go with Spartans. But I kind of battle for uh, fifth place at the moment. They're they're looking to maybe for Shire or someone to maybe slip out the top four if they can do it. But certainly, it's uh, at the moment it's sort of, it's sort of battle for fifth with Spartans and civil service strollers. Just looking at a lot of the fixtures seem to be between teams who are really close in the league this week coming. So I that's um, I'm just looking they're fifth and sixth at the moment and only a point between them. So again, it's probably going to be another one. Um, Maybe a toss of a coin. I think probably Spartans really just um, edging it again, just home advantage. But they are. I mean, it is a bit of a derby. Those two are are pretty close together, if I remember correctly. Um, so I uh, it will be a a tough one, but um, uh, probably Spartans. I think. Yep, and uh, another derby: University of Stirling versus Edinburgh University at Fourth Bank Stadium. The Uni Derby. <laughs> I tell you what, on paper, you probably would say University of Stirling, but Edinburgh Uni do have a decent record. I'm pretty sure they beat them in the box uh, earlier in the season as well. So Edinburgh Uni will be up for this one. But just having seen University of Stirling uh, and spoke to Chris Geddes and that, he'll be looking at this one and want to get three points. And I'm going to put them as my favourites for that one. Yeah, I would agree. I think the, they will have too much for, um, for Edinburgh. I know... These guys play in different leagues as well, so they, they'll probably see each other a lot more than um, than a lot of other sides. So there will be that kind of uh, that rivalry there. But certainly from what I've seen of Stirling Uni this this uh, season, I think they'll probably have too much for Edinburgh. And our final game, Kelly Hearts versus East Stirlingshire. Are you going to be at Kev? Yes, I'll be there, mate. I'll be uh, b- back at home. Yes, uh, we've got hospitality. Uh, <laughs> myself, uh, Moza, Ruri, and Sean all will be in hospitality. I think it's the first time I've ever been in hospitality. Actually, well, actually paying my money, sort of thing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this game uh, again. I, I don't know. You would expect uh, Kelly to do well, especially at home in New Central Park. I. I worry for Shire in this one because I, I think they're not wanting another hard luck 1-0, but I think that's possibly the result they might get. Uh, we t- I talked about it earlier, obviously, but I, I do see Kelty beating them uh, in New Central Park. Yep, I think so too. I, I've got a, a couple of my mates that I've talked into coming along to see Kelty uh, that weekend, um, so I'll be hoping the, the boys can put on a good show for these guys. Um, and kind of show these fancy Dan League supporters what they're missing uh, at our level. But I, I would like to think, I mean, I know Kelty have got a bit of a mixed um, record against Shire um, from last season, but I, I just think 
Kelty certainly look a different proposition just this season. They um, they seem to be able to either blow teams away or grind out a result when they need to. So I would I would like to I'd like to think that Kelty would win that one. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the weekend's fixtures. That's a, a quality, uh, probably one of the probably the best fixture cards uh, of the season. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember a fixture list having quite as many games that are, are either derbies or, or teams so close to each other. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a great way to to start off the new year. A great way to round off your Christmas holidays. Get yourself along to one of these games. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll move on to plugs. Uh, Obviously, at the start of the episode, I mentioned uh, they usually do photography for the likes of the, the five teams, Gene Field. Uh, where can people find your work? I, well, my, my website is KM Photo. That's K A Y E M Photo.co.uk. Or you'll find me on uh, Facebook and on Twitter, um, the same at KM Photo. Uh, and there you'll find all of the match pictures. Um, and kind of the, the blog that I do usually just where me kind of my thoughts on the game. So that's that's where you'll find all of my stuff. And for myself, it's at Rampant FM on Twitter. You can find the catch up at Official Catch Up on Twitter, and uh, on Facebook it's Lowland League Catch Up. Uh, obviously, thanks for coming on, Kev. Uh, obviously, it was a wee bit uh, sort of late notice, if you will. I really appreciate you you coming on it. You're obviously welcome any time. I think it's been a bit weird this season. I don't think we've really been consistent with with myself, Derek, or, or Sean. There's been very few episodes with three of us. Uh, but, you know, I really appreciate you coming on, mate, and uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me back on. It's been a pleasure.